Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Quran Weekly. This is your brother Umm Sulaiman. Welcome back to the Superstar Series, and we continue our discussion on the women of Jannah. And today we'll be talking about the greatest woman who has ever walked the face of the earth, that is Maryam, the daughter of Imran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Maryam, O Maryam, inna Allah astafaki wa tahharaki wa astafaki ala nisa al alameen. O Maryam, Allah has chosen you, Allah has purified you, and Allah has chosen you over all of the women of the world. So Maryam is the greatest woman of all time. Rasulullah said, Khayru nisa fi zamaniha. She is the best woman of her time. And Khadija radiallahu anha is the best woman of her time. What makes Maryam so special, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she's an example for those who believe. Wa Maryam abnata Imran. Notice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not associate Maryam with Isa alayhi salam in every ayah of the Qur'an. In fact, as Allah is mentioning her, just after mentioning that Asya as the wife of Fir'aun, just after mentioning Asya as the wife of Fir'aun and the wives of Lut and, and uh, Nuh alayhi salam as their wives, he doesn't say Maryam, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him. He just says Maryam of Natu Imran. What is the wisdom of that? That Maryam's greatness is not necessarily tied to Isa alayhi salam. She was great because of who she was. And in fact, her name is even mentioned more than the name of Isa alayhi salam in the Quran because of how great she was. She's not just a woman who's great because she happened to be the mother of a prophet. She's recognized as a woman who perfected her faith as the Prophet mentioned her uh, amongst that group. She's a woman who demonstrates for all of us how to really have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to truly trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our most difficult times. She's an example of modesty for both men and women, because yes, modesty exists for men as well, so men and women. She's an example of modesty. She's an example in her devotion to her ibadah, her worship. I mean, all of these things Maryam alayhi salam excels in. So it's not just that she's the mother of Isa alayhi salam. And her story starts off with ibadah. Uh, and she was dedicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even before she was born. Her mother is Hinna bintu Faqud, Hannah. Uh, and her father, of course, is Imran alayhi salam. And Hinna bint Faqud and Imran, Imran being the Imam of his people, they were unable to have children for many, many, many years. Uh, very similar to the story of, of Zakaria alayhi salam, except it wasn't that old. But, you know, he wasn't that old, but he did reach an age where it wasn't expected that he would have children anymore or that she would have children. And then all of a sudden, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives her the news that she's pregnant. And, you know, she's not told what this is going to, what kind of child this is going to be, whether it's going to be a boy or a girl, or whether it's going to be a prophet or a layman. She's not told anything about the type of child, the gender of the child, or anything of that sort. She just knows that she's pregnant, and she praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imran salam praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people are celebrating, they're overjoyed because they love Imran and his wife. And then all of a sudden, tragedy. Imran dies a sudden death. So now, Hinna bint Faqud is left with this baby that's not even born yet, that's going to already be born without a father. And then, as she delivers the child, expecting that it was going to be a boy, so that it could be a prophet, and so that, it could, so that he could do da'wah and those types of things, since he dedicated uh, this child to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her a girl. And subhanAllah, Allah azza wa jal, as he's narrating the story to us in the Qur'an, قَالَتْ رَبِّ إِنِّي وَضَعْتُهَا أُنثَى When she gave birth, she said, Oh Allah, I gave birth to a girl. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا وَضَعَتْ Allah already knows what she gave birth to. And Allah is telling us that. Allah knows what she gave birth to. It wasn't by accident. She gave birth to a girl for a reason. And وَلَيْسَ الذَّكَرُكَ الْأُنثَى She says, Oh Allah, a boy is not like a girl. So she's, she's complaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that, you know, I, I expected it to be a boy. But wa inni samaytuha Maryam, I'm naming her Maryam. Wa inni u'idhuha bika wa zurriyataha min ash-shaytan rajim, and I seek refuge in you, O Allah, for her and for her offspring from the accursed devil. And because of that, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi said, when Maryam and, and and her son were born, they were spared from the poking of shaytan, which causes babies to cry when they are born. So they were born without crying because the shaytan did not appear to them and he could not affect them because of the du'a of Hinna bintu Faqud, the mother of Maryam. And Maryam alayhi salam, of course, now that she's born, and, and Hinna doesn't know what to do with her because it wasn't, in that society, it just wasn't possible or practical for a woman to be dedicated to the temple because it was only men that were in the temple at that time. It wasn't practical, practical for a woman to go out and do da'wah. And subhanAllah, you know, she has this baby and she wanted to fulfill her promise to Allah. So Zakariya alayhi salam, 
takes it upon himself. And Rasulullah says about Zakariya najaran that he was a carpenter and he used to eat from his daily earnings. And so Zakariya built a mihrab, not, not, a, not, a, uh, not just an area in the masjid, but rather he built a structure in the masjid, a room in the masjid. Mihrab comes from the word haraba, to wage war. Okay, so she wages war on herself. When you're, when you're in this place of ibadah, you wage war on yourself. And what do I mean by waging war against yourself? It means to stand there and to wage war against your desires, against yourself, against your laziness, against your lowly desires, and force yourself to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and stand there in devotion the way that Maryam alayhi salam did. So she, he built this place for her where she could have her privacy, grow up in that temple and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just as a man would, while at the same time, of course, not compromising her modesty. So Zakariya would go up and check on her every single day as she grew up and this young girl loved to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean she craved it and in fact subhanAllah and this is actually the nature of, of when she left them, when she would leave the masjid in the first place, she would leave to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the times when she could not be in the masjid. She would still go out to the east and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, watch the sunrise and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This woman ate you know, breathe, drink uh, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even as she was a young girl. And so Zakariya would come, find her in ibadah, find her worshipping Allah all the time. And one day Zakariya comes and Zakariya is noticing that food is coming from somewhere and that food is out of season. Okay, so it's not like, and back then they didn't have refrigerators, so it's not like it's, it's, it's possible to store food that's out of season at that time. So Zakariya is wondering, What's going on here? So one day he asks her, he says, Ya Maryam, anna laki hadha? Where is this coming from? Who's giving this to you? Maryam alayhi salam responds and says, Qala tuwa min indillah. She says, It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna Allah yarzuku man yasha bi ghayri hisab. Allah gives to whom he wills, whenever he wills. Notice Maryam alayhi salam and Zakariya alayhi salam have an understanding of dua here. Maryam does not claim to have a special relationship with Allah where only she can ask Allah and be given. She's saying to Zakariya Allah gives whoever He wants, you know, to whomever He wants, whenever He wants, so you should call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you desire. There's, that's something that's very, very, very beautiful because Zakariya did not say, oh, make dua for me. Hunalika da'a Zakariya Rabbah. Zakariya understood from the da'wah of Maryam alayhi salam, he got the message that you know what? I should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it seems improbable, I should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that child. So Zakariya alayhi salam goes and he makes his qiyamul layl and Allah grants him what he grants him. Maryam alayhi salam then leaves at the time where she would leave the masjid and she goes to the east and as she is there by herself remembering Allah, a beautiful man comes, basharan sawiyya, a perfect symmetrical human being and beauty scientifically is me uh, measured by, by symmetry, right? Jibreel Islam, Allah describes Jibreel Islam as a perfectly symmetrical human being. So she's already showed us, Maryam, what she is in terms of her ibadah. Look at her modesty. She sees this man that she doesn't know. Maryam, does, and he's not looking at her without clothes or in any way, but she, she realizes she's all alone and this beautiful man comes. She doesn't flirt with him and say, well, hi, how are you? You know, and, and what are you doing? And what's your name? She sees him. And before he can even speak, before he can even say Salamu Alaikum, she looks at him and says, A'udhu bil Rahmani minka in kunta taqiyya. Now sisters don't say that to, to people out in public just because you see them and say, A'udhu bil Rahmani minka in kunta taqiyya. Maryam was not used to being approached by a man, so she said, I seek refuge in Ar Rahman, the most merciful, from you if you have any consciousness, piety, or fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, in one sentence, Maryam alayhi salam does so much. Number one, she shows, I'm not interested. Okay, I don't know what you're going to say. You need to know, I'm not interested in any way. Number two, she mentions the name of Allah ar-Rahman. Ukhawifuka bil-Rahman. I'm, I'm scaring you by mentioning ar-Rahman. Why? And she didn't, why didn't she mention like Jabbar or Aziz or a name of Allah that, that denotes wrath or, or you know, honor or, or izza, you know, dignity, power. Why Rahman? Because Maryam wants to let him know that you can make tawbah. Just go back and say, Astaghfirullah, seek forgiveness from Allah and He's merciful enough to forgive you if you have any form of taqwa inside of you. And of, at that point, as the ulama tell us, because usually Allah sends Jibreel as a human being first. 
as was the case of the Messenger right? Because it's less intimidating to see a human being than to see an angel in their actual form. And the angels are huge. They fill up the entire skies with their wings and subhanAllah, they're not what we, you know, what we think of. They're not, they don't just have two you know, white feathers as wings and, and fly around and have shiny hair. No, the angels are huge creations of Allah, have thousands of wings, so it's less intimidating when you see a human being. But this woman's modesty was at that level where even when a human, when a human being comes to her, it's less intimidating than when Allah sends the angel in his creation. So at that point, when she said those words, Jibreel alayhi salam went to his original form. Okay? And Jibreel alayhi salam gave her the news of Isa alayhi salam, wa kana amran maqdiyya, and that is, this is a closed case, you cannot change this, you can't make dua. Amran maqdiyya means you're already pregnant. And Jibreel alayhi salam blew into her, and she became pregnant with Isa alayhi salam. And now, you know, she's already proved her worship, she's proved her modesty. And keep in mind, she's 16 years old. Okay, she's around the age of 16 years old. She has to deliver a child by herself in a society where if you smell like adultery, okay, if you've been accused of adultery in any way, you're going to be stoned, you're going to be tortured. But this woman, subhanAllah, she goes and she, she hides from society. And as the pains of childbirth come to her, and subhanAllah, any woman that's, that's gone through labor, you know, would tell you that there is no pain that's like it. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said if a woman dies in labor while she's delivering, okay, while she's pregnant, and while, while she's delivering, or even in the postnatal period that she dies as a martyr. Because this is a very difficult time and pushes you to, you know, it pushes you as close to death as you will ever be. So Maryam Islam, the 16-year-old girl is delivering this baby by herself and she said, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyan mansiya. I wish I would have died before this and been completely forgotten. SubhanAllah, I wish I never existed because the shame that she's going to be put through, the, the, you know, she's, she's probably going to be stoned, the baby is going to be stoned, you know, all that she's going to go through. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to Maryam alayhi salam. And actually Jibreel, through Jibreel alayhi salam, Jibreel alayhi salam, whenever she says, Ya laytani mittu qabla hadha wa kuntu nasyan mansiya, Jibreel alayhi salam responds to her, don't grieve, don't grieve, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a river beneath you. And, and Jibreel alayhi salam says, وَهُزِّي إِلَيْكِ بِجِذْعِ النَّخْلَةِ تُسَاقِطَ عَلَيْكِ رُطَبًا جَنِيَّ And go ahead and shake that palm tree. And fresh ripe dates will fall upon you. Now, this is very beautiful. Because a woman, as she's giving birth, is very, very, very strong. She could break a man's hand, she could, she could rip the, the rails off the bed, right? She becomes the Incredible Hulk. After she's given birth, she's tired, fatigued, weak. And Jibreel alayhi salam first tells her, Allah tahzani, don't grieve. Your mother said that you're just a girl, right? You are saying that you wish you never existed. Allah is going to make you a legend for all men and for all women. وَكَانَتْ مِنَ الْقَانِتِينَ And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Tahreem that Maryam is not just from Al-Qanitat, the devout women. Maryam is from the devout men and women. She holds her own. She has a special rank amongst all men and all women. So your mother was wrong and you were wrong. Don't grieve. And Allah is with you. And so shake that palm tree. And you can't shake a palm tree and expect anything to fall. Not a real palm tree. But Allah was teaching her tawakkul, to trust Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this woman that just gave birth, young girl just, just gave birth, shakes that tree, the dates fall upon her. So she knows Allah is with her. And she knows when Allah tells her, you're not allowed to defend yourself, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will defend her. And so when she goes back to her people, and they start to mock her, and they say, Ya Ukhta Harun, sister of Aaron. And the reason why they said sister of Aaron was because they were likening her to Harun alayhi salam, who had a high position. So they're saying, you're just like Harun. You had such a high position and you fell from glory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is telling her, you have to listen to all of this and to, and, and to them telling you, your parents were not like, like this. No one made you this way. But Allah will make a way out for you. And she knew that. So Allah says, أَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُ You know what? She went to her people carrying the baby. If Allah is with me, I don't care anymore. If this isn't a punishment, I don't care. Because with all of those years of ibadah, all of those years of worship, Allah was preparing her to trust Him at, the, at that 
at that crucial moment, at that critical moment. And that worship for all those years taught her that. So she goes with her baby. She hears her baby speak for the first time and defend her alayhi salam. Allah never told her the baby is going to speak on your behalf and defend you. She's never heard this child speak before. Subhanallah. But that's her tawakkul. That's the extent of her trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Maryam kanat min al qanitin. Maryam is an example for all men and all women uh, in, in, how to, uh, in, you know, in regards to how to be devout, how to be devoted in regards to our worship, how to maintain our modesty, and at the same time, how to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless her. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reunite us with Maryam alayhi salam in the highest level of Jannah al-Firdaus in the company of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and all of the righteous. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Aqulu qawli hadha. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.